You must not go very far away, perhaps to Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. The year is 1992. Hip-hop is alive, fresh, and vibrant. There's music coming from every region, from coast to coast. The beauty of this year is no matter what your preference was, there was always something for every type of fan. In this era, you not only had to be dope, you had to be original to stand out. There were tons of record labels competing for new talent. A new group out of Flatbush, Brooklyn emerged called the Fushnikins. The three members included Pakfu, Makfu, and Chipfu. The name, just like the group, is almost from a different world. The meaning of their name. Fushnikins means for unity stands alone. F U for unity. For unity alone, all cultures, all nationalities. Schnickens. Schnickens, Schnickens, Schnickens. Schnicken means everybody. No matter what race or creed or what color, or wherever you're from, you're Schnicken. You're Schnicken. Too. Everybody's a Everybody's a Everybody. Everybody. means for unity of many styles, lyrical techniques, and verbal tactics that we mastered. It's just universal. We kick mad styles. We got a hardcore loony style by the capital B O C, the ragamuffin style, speed rapping, speed chatting. We got hardcore, we got straight up rap, we have substitution. Backwards and forwards techniques, you know what I mean? We have we got it going on in all aspects. Like many hip hop groups, there's always a standout member of the bunch. Chipu, who might be one of the most underrated MCs in hip hop history, was that person. Chipu was of West Indian background and descent. Before Chipu started rhyming, he made reggae music and wanted to become a reggae artist. Chipu was heavily inspired by a reggae slash hip hop artist named Shine. They said she died from an affliction, but we know it's drug addiction because she quickly went to sleep. That's alone, you said, but don't be laughing. You can raise a lick of just a walk. Don't give me that middle one, don't give me that middle one. Crack, crack, don't. Chipu noticed how Shine had merged both rapping and reggae very seamlessly. These two forms of music would not only help mold his style but keep him musically in the mix later on in his career. The Fushnikins were one of the first hip-hop groups to incorporate Kung Fu into their visuals and into their music. Chip Fu studied martial arts as a child, and this helped him develop his style. Chip Fu wanted to showcase as many styles every time he touched a mic. To get on as an MC, Chip Fu joined dozens of MC contests in New York in order to get his name out. Wow, I joined every contest that they had in New York City. They had contests at the building, they had contests at SOBs, they had contests at Wetlands. There was a particular um, contest where Jamal Ski was actually hosting the contest. It was a hip-hop and a reggae contest. And people would come in and sign their names on the papers who wanted to do hip-hop, and people would sign their name on the reggae. So I figured I'd, you know, prove a point that night, and what I did was sign my name on both pieces of paper. I said, I'm going to do the reggae contest, and I'm going to do the hip-hop contest. And I won both every night that they had it. So at that point, Jamalski was bringing me to different clubs, and, and any time we met up at a club, he just called me to touch the mic, and then 
you know, word just started spreading about this kid, you know, that's supposed to be nice. Pak Fu and Mak Fu created the name Fushnikins. The three formed a group and got signed by Jive Records after a performance at a hip hop event at Howard University. The group started recording their debut album, Fool, Don't Take It Personal, in 1991. The lead single, Ring the Alarm, reached number six on the U.S. Billboard Hot Rap Songs chart. Ring the Alarm features a sample from popular Jamaican artist Tenor Saw, also called Ring the Alarm. The beauty of this song is that it got airplays not only on hip hop stations, but also on reggae stations, which gave it a mass appeal. The Fushnikin's first album features production by Ali Shahi Muhammad from the iconic hip-hop group A Tribe Called Quest. The group's second single, La Move, featured Five Dog from A Tribe Called Quest. The Five Dog feature was definitely a positive cosign for the group, but also was not by coincidence. Five Dog and Chip Fu have known each other since they were young teens. Ife and Pac Fu, Fife's mother and Pac Fu's mother grew up in Trinidad. You know, and she, Fife used to come on the block and he would play football. And I remember I was playing yeah. football, <laughs> right? So I'd be on Lennox Steps telling the jokes, which is Pac Fu. I'd be telling the jokes of Pac Fu on the steps, but. Fife was also sickly when he was young too, so church or whatever. So I, I knew him from there too. So it was before music. So then to actually get signed to Jive, and then Lennox sees his childhood friend, like, "Yo, Malik, what's happening?" He's like, "So you're here?" He's like, "Yeah, we got signed." So automatically he was like, "Yo, we got to do a record." You know, we got to do a record. Uh, we didn't know what we would do, what what type of record we were going to do. Fife and I got closer because of the whole parents being from Trinidad and you know, everybody used to say, y'all look alike. And I'm like, I don't look like five years. Sure <laughs> me, um, and the closeness grew from there. Um, very competitive person. Very competitive. You know what I mean? That was his thing. Like, I'm going to kick. And he, he's one dude that I think that a lot of people slept on when it came to freestyling. All right. An incredible freestyler. Like, you put him in. We rock from NYC down to Philly. Five dog gets all up in your rectum. Core states joint are back at the spectrum. It really don't matter. We rock it everywhere. Just don't care. We slam like Ric Flair. Yeah, five biggie. I get busy to the beach. Nigga rock a fan from the New York Street. The Foo Stickers debut album was successful. It was certified gold, selling over 500,000 units. In 1993, the group began recording their follow-up album called Nervous Breakdown. According to Chip Fu, he started writing this as a solo album. This was then turned into a group album. Before the album Breakdown released in 1994, the group needed a lead single. They would call in a secret weapon that was never done before in hip-hop to lead off the second album.
Shaquille O'Neal was known for being animated, fun, and at the same time punishing on the basketball court. He loved video games and he definitely loved hip hop. The group saw an interview from Shaq and he said the Fushnikins was his, was his favorite group. The group invited him to be on a song for their album, which shocked the world. Little did they know a 7 foot NBA player would help skyrocket their fame and create one of the best hip hop singles of all time. In the summer of 1993, What's Up Doc dropped and it shot up the charts all the way to the top 40 on the billboard. The single alone sold 500,000 copies. The song created such a huge buzz, it was featured on MTV's biggest comedy cartoon at the time, Beavis and Butthead. The group would release their second album, Nervous Breakdown, in 1994. This album broke the sophomore album jinx that most artists have after a debut. The group sounded more dynamic, the beats carried the lyrics, and critics gave it a lot of props. The second single, Breakdown, had a West Coast bop that really showed the range the group had. They could do just about any style with ease. The group released a Greatest Hits album and fulfilled their three album deal with their record label. This would actually be the group's final album. Chip Fu, however, rebranded it as a solo reggae artist, calling himself Jungle Rock Jr., tapping back into his reggae roots. When he would book shows as a reggae artist under the name Jungle Rock Jr., some promoters had no idea he was a legendary MC Chip Fu of one of the greatest hip hop groups of all time. Now, so the dumb, 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 now, so